Marcus Conti reporting, man nabbed after walking into St. Patrick's Cathedral with gas cans and lighters right here in New York City. Uh Uh-oh, copycat firebug? I don't know, right after Notre Dame burns, Notre Dame burns, and then a day or two later, a man walks into St. Patrick's Cathedral lugging two gas cans, two vials of uh, lighter fluid, and a couple of clickers to set a fire. What the hell is going on? So they got the guy. Uh, let's, look, let's jump right in. So here he is. Man nabbed after walking into St. Patrick's Cathedral with gas cans. What's his name? Mike Lamparello. Uh-oh. No. Ali Akba. Ali Akba. Ali Akba. It's no Ali Akba, right? He's a fucking an Italian guy from New Jersey. Uh-oh. Another QAnon killer. Another QAnon, QAnon kook. I don't know. Anthony Camillo, the QAnon killer from New Jersey, 24 years old, Camillo. And now we got Mark Lamparello from New Jersey, 37. Ah, it's kooks, man. Kook, kook, copycat, copycat crazies, right? Is it, do we have a mental illness problem in this country? I don't know. Let's find out. So, so the good news is that um, this guy walked into... Uh, allegedly walked in. He did walk in. They got him. He walked in uh, and uh, walked through the church with gasoline cans. No harm done. All right? No fire. No fire whatsoever. So let's, um, uh, Mark Lamparello, just to, I'm going to give you a lot of history of who he is. Right? I got a lot of info. Mark Lamparello, 37, of New Jersey, entered the historic Midtown Church at 8 p.m. with flammable paraphernalia, but was quickly intercepted by church security, law enforcement said. So here's the gas cans. One, two gas cans, two two two-gallon gas cans. I see you can do a lot of damage with that, right? It's a heavy accelerant on old wood. He's got two lighter fluid cans of lighter fluid, two of the hand clickers, right? His story was that he walked through the church because he ran out of gas. He walked through one side of the church to come out the other side to go to his car that ran out of gas. But why are you carrying lighters? Why are you carrying clickers? Uh, so there is motive for arson. Right? Uh, so let's look, at the, let's look at this. This guy, uh, this uh, police, whoever, uh, really explains it well. Listen. At approximately 7.55 p.m. tonight, an individual uh, pulled up in a minivan on Fifth Avenue, uh, left the car there for some time, walked around the area. Uh, but at 17.55 or hours, or rather 7.55 p.m., the individual returns to that minivan, uh, takes out two two-gallon cans of gasoline, a uh, plastic bag containing two bottles of lighter fluid, uh, the type of which you would use to light a charcoal grill or a barbecue, uh, two extended lighters, uh, butane lighters uh, controlled by a trigger, and enters St. Patrick's Cathedral. As he enters the cathedral, he's confronted uh, by a cathedral security officer who asks him where he's going, informs him he can't uh, proceed into the cathedral carrying these things, at that point, some gasoline apparently is spilled out onto the floor as he's turned around. Uh, the St. Patrick's employee notifies two CRC, Critical Response Command, uh, from the Counterterrorism Bureau police officers from our striker team who are outside, uh, that the individual went um, south on Fifth Avenue and onto 50th Street. They catch up to the individual who's carrying the gas cans and begin to question him. His answers were inconsistent and evasive, although he remained uh, uh, conversational with them and cooperative. His basic story was that he was cutting through the cathedral um, to get to Madison Avenue, that his car had run out of gas. Um, We took a look at uh, the vehicle. Uh, It was not out of gas. And at that point, he was taken into custody and brought to the Midtown North Station House. There was some very good work done here, um, obviously by the St. Patrick's uh, Cathedral security officer who encountered this man immediately inside, as well as the two CRC police officers who tracked him down 
engaged him um, in conversation, questioned him, located the vehicle, and took him into custody. Questions? Is terror being considered as a possible motive? It's too early to say that. Um, it's hard to say exactly what his intentions were, but I think the totality of circumstances of an individual walking into an iconic location like St. Patrick's Cathedral, carrying uh, over four gallons of gasoline, two bottles of lighter fluid and lighters, uh, is something that we would have great concern over. Um, his story is, consist is not consistent. So he um, is in conversation with detectives right now. I think if you add to that the events um, in the iconic location of uh, the fire in Notre Dame uh, this week and, um, and all the publicity around that, this is a location where we always have heightened security. That is normal. Um, we've added to that in recent days. And I think this is an indicator of, of something that, uh, that would be very suspicious. Uh, not uh, in his initial statements. We're talking to him now, uh, but I wouldn't be able to characterize uh, his statements beyond what he told us in the instant encounter. Uh, he is known to police, and uh, we are looking into his background, obviously, talking to a couple of other agencies. Uh, this investigation involves the Detective Bureau. Uh, it involves uh, the Intelligence Bureau the Counterterrorism Bureau, and the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. Uh, that is out of an abundance of caution uh, because we don't know exactly what his mindset was, what his motive was, but we do know that carrying um, two cans of gasoline and the uh, equipment to light that uh, through a public area uh, and a place like St. Patrick's Cathedral is something that presents a danger to the public, and that's why he's in custody. Uh, there were people inside the church at the time he entered the church was open and um again uh he was creating a hazard i'm not going to characterize his statements um in that level of detail and we're still talking to him um we're talking to the district attorney's office uh, at the same time we're talking to him uh, at the point that we charge him uh, with a crime, a specific crime, uh, we'll release his identity. So that's where we are now. So we're at the point where that was last night. Good job, detective work. Good detective work in New York City, categorizing who he is. They said that, um, you know, again, that he has lighters. Why is it his, his story about, about uh, walking through the church? Uh, to get from one side of the church to the other side. Uh, because, again, I know the area. It's, it's Madison Avenue. The, the church is on, is, there's, um, there's two, there's two uh, blocks, Madison Avenue and Fifth Avenue. Right? And you could theoretically walk from Madison Avenue in the back and come out of Fifth Avenue. That's what he told the police he was doing. And it turns out that the story doesn't, it doesn't hold water, right? Because... And his car wasn't out of gas, so. But theoretically, he could have done that. So here he is. Well, let's learn about the psychology of the guy. I found this. Uh, here's his. He was teaching here. No crying. Lehman College. All right. He was teaching at Lehman College, and uh, and there he is. There's his email address. Uh, adjunct lecturer, PhD candidates, CUNY uh, Graduate Center. Uh, so, Mark Lam Lamborello, this is a lot of re reiteration of what the police just told us. Let's look at, um, let's look at, police say suspect was uh, spotted by security, 21-gallon uh, red gas cans. All right, we know that. Here's some uh, police outside. So um, there's the gas cans. <laughs> Got a guest this morning. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> so 
So here's the gas cans, right? You've got a uh, man walks into cathedral. No doubt about it. Two clickers. He's got the barbecue clickers with him. All right? You can't say that you're going to fill up your, gar- your car with gas and you leave the, uh, well, why are you clickers? What are you, what are you, what are you looking to what are you looking to, you know, click? <laughs> so that's a bullshit story, right? But let's look at the psychology of the guy, right? He spilled some gas on the way in. All right, so he was a Jersey resident, uh, told police he ran out of gas. Uh, there's his van, uneventful. There's nothing, no crazy stickers or, you know, indication that he was uh, a, a, pol- a political political. Guy like Cesar Sayak with the stickers all over his window. Uh, he was known to police. We heard that from the police. Here he is. So Mark Lambarello attended Boston College at uh, a Catholic school and was the music director. Ah, one of those musicians. He's a musician. Ah, play. All right, so he's a musician in New Jersey. Mark Lamparello attended Boston College at the Catholic school run by Jesuits. He also went to Jesuit High School, Bergen, uh, Bergen Catholic School, graduated in 2000. Uh, <clears throat> music director at St. Joseph's Church in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That's right over the water. Uh, you could see, if you stand on your roof in East Rutherford, you could see uh, the Manhattan skyline. Uh, what else? So... He was in that role. He was a music director for a long time, a couple of years. He frequently posted on the Reddit community, I am ugly and gone wild. <laughs> so he's definitely ugly and he definitely likes looking at um, women and posting nude photos of themselves. Ah, Where's the QAnon shit? Where's the kooky Q- QAnon? Is he QAnon kook? I don't know. In August, uh, his Facebook page is down. I tried to find it. It's gone. In August, he wrote about his own appearance. I am going through a phase. He lost 70 pounds. Used to be a fat guy. Uh, What else? You can read it for yourself. (laughs) So, Lambert has worked as an, oh, uh, as a professor. Right? Oh yeah, the the big one of the big lines was this that he he where's the line he what he was writing about right? that's what I wanted to see what he was writing about um, he wrote about subjects of of religion right? I can't find the thing right? interacting people. Uh, here it is. Here it is. So, so Lam- uh, Lambert is a Boston College educated prof- 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 philosophy professor who has been involved in the Catholic Church in the past. According to his, uh, his bio for a recent published book he wrote, a native of New Jersey, Mark Lamparello, studied philosophy at Boston College, graduated Pi Beta Kappa 2004. Here it is. Mark has been heavily engaged in the study of philosophy from an early age and is currently working on two other book-length projects, including a witty dialogue on arguments for and against the existence of God <laughs> and a series of other essays right? So about practical motivation. Hmm, right? So the existence of God. Now, also, it, 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 could, it brings into... Uh, the mind stream about Pizzagate, right? Is this a hit on a, is there motive? There, there is motive. There is motive for his, his, his belief that maybe God doesn't exist and this is all a big sham, right? The kooks, right? The kooks. Right? Take, it out on, take it out on regular people and go burn somebody's shit down. But also, what about the, an attack on pedophiles, right? Uh, is that is that possible as well? Did he did he retaliate against you know possible pedophiles? I don't know. So there's the van. There's the man. Uh, possible reasons. Nothing really. But there is a lot of circumstantial evidence, as the uh, as the as these detectives had said, right? Because why are you walking through the tunnel? Why are you walking through the church? Here's, here's the uh, Cardinal. So, thank you very much, and here's Cardinal Dolan. This is two weeks before 
First Notre of Dame. All, folks, thank you. Thank you very much for your interest and your company and your presence. Um, I just thought it would be extraordinarily uh, uh, appropriate if we publicly expressed on behalf of our beloved St. Patrick's Cathedral and on behalf of the citizens of New York uh, the love, the solidarity, the prayers, and the sorrow that we feel uh, over the uh, devastating fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. So he's commenting on Notre Dame. So... So wow, that's so that's some heavy stuff, right? So is there a connection? Did there's no harm done, right? So that's the good news, right? That is the good news. The good news is this is no <laughs> this cat went through some had a had a bad day at the vet the other day, right? Seventeen years old, she went to the vet and she held off four <laughs> four nurses, the doctor and, and two nurses and myself couldn't hold the cat down to examine her, right? And uh she won. She won. Got back in the box. I, end, I, I ended the day with only a few scars. <laughs> Tough cat for 17 years old. Hey. Knocked down my, no, she knocked down my water bottle. So, so that's all. So uh, is, it, is there a connection? Is it a copycat crime? Well, there really is no crime. Is he, he'll probably be tried for conspiracy based on all the circumstantial evidence. Can a grand jury indict him for a conspiracy? Who knows? Maybe, possibly. Let's hear what he has to say more of. Uh, it doesn't, there's no immediate links. Well, he took down his Facebook page, but if they track through his, his check his footprints where he was on the web, was he at QAnon sites? Was he, was he involved in any conspiracy-oriented sites? Did he watch the cathedral burn 400 times? You know, who knows? Right? But uh, it's an interesting story. He's not no Ali Akba. Ali 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 Akba. No Ali Akba. He's an Italian from New Jersey. Sopranos. Uh, Italian from New Jersey. Sopranos. No Ali Ali Akba. Marcus Conti reporting. Oh, while you're here, uh, you can do this. Right, sign up and become a Patreon of this channel. Right, it's it's, it's growing. In, uh, uh, independent media is on the rise, right? You don't have to go to mainstream media and get get lied to anymore. You come here for just a dollar or two, and I give you, I send you some free stickers when you sign up, man. Marcus Conti reporting. Also, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>